I made a post the other day talking about how cold December could be. Let's talk about why. Here's our stratospheric 10 millibar height anomaly and watch what happens as we get into mid-November and towards the end of November. We see a large stratospheric warming event. This is what disrupts our stratospheric polar vortex. And when you hear about these big Arctic blasts, these record-breaking historic cold events, it's when you have a breakdown of your stratospheric polar vortex, not just your tropospheric polar vortex. The coldest air on the planet is up in the stratosphere in the Northern Hemisphere. This air on average is even colder than the air above Antarctica. And that has to do with the geography of the land around the Arctic in the Northern Hemisphere. So when we see warm anomalies up here, we understand that that force field of wind or that low pressure that holds in all of this freezing stratospheric air is probably going to slow and it's likely going to release that air into the lower latitudes. Typically, when this breaks down, you don't get an instant release of cold air. There's a little bit of a lacking event, sometimes a week or two. So if we see these warm anomalies building up at the end of November, you can bet in December, we're probably going to get a very negative AO, a very negative Arctic oscillation that's going to try and set December temperature and maybe even snowfall records. And what happens as we get into December as well? On our European weekly, we see constant blocking over Greenland and we see troughing continuously down in to the eastern US. These are signs, like I said, of an extremely cold and potentially snowy east this December. Depending on how big this breakdown of the polar vortex is, we could see the west get involved here too. There's a possibility we just see a very cold west to east coast for the month of December. 